Okay, so uh, similar to what we did last week, the goal tonight will be to do three or four brachos, but after each one, we'll kind of pause and, and, and take any comments, questions. We might have to limit the comments, questions that are able to uh, keep on moving. Um, we're up to the third bracha, Atta Kadosh. If, if you happen to have the Art Scroll English, I'm sure it can be found on many pages of Art Scroll English, but I'm, page, I'm on page 102. So this is the third bracha of the opening section of praise of Akadosh Baruch Hu. The first bracha was about our general relationship to, with God through the patriarchs. The second bracha was recognizing the greatness of God and the kindness of God in our world. And then this third bracha, which is the end of this beginning unit, just talks about the sanctity of God. Uh, the Kuzari has a very interesting thought here, and he explains that the first two brachos are very powerful. And if you had to summarize the effect of the first two brachos, the first two brachos make God's existence in our personal lives extremely real. We, we connect to you because we come from people that connect to you. We, we look around, we see the rain is thanks to you, you know, this is thanks to you, that is thanks to you. And of course that's a very important component of prayer to make our connection with God a very real thing. Sometimes we risk getting a little bit too buddy-buddy with God. And so if, if everything is on our terms, you know, in the end of the day there's a difference between reaching up to God and so to say, pulling God down to us. And if it's all about pulling God down to us, we probably lose something at some point. So the Kuzari says that the, the final bracha of this opening section of Shemona Esrei is Atta Kadosh. Uh, we translate Kadosh as holy, but on a very literal level, Kadosh means separate. You're a part. We don't begin to understand what you're all about. We can reflect on that which you do in our world, but we understand that you're far beyond our comprehension. So that's, that's the point being made over here. We'll just, the Rav Schwab makes um, an interesting point. He says the word Kadosh shows up three times in this bracha. Ata Kadosh, you're holy. Bishim Cha Kadosh, your name is holy. By the way, I, I forgot who says this. I once saw someone, what does it mean? Your name, you're holy and your name is holy. What, is, what does that mean? So your essence is totally beyond us. Even that which we call you, that your name refers to how we relate to you. You could theoretically have someone whose essence is totally beyond us, but we relate to them in a manner that we can understand. Even the way, even what we call you is totally beyond us. You're holy, your name is holy, and then we end off saying, you blessed are thou the God of holiness. So there's, we talk, we say the word Kadosh three times in the bracha. So Rav Schwab suggests that this is connected to the famous pasuk we have in Kedusha, which is what the Malachim, the angels, say in praise to Kadosh Baruch Hu, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. That, 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 that they recite the fact that God is holy three times. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to capture that a little bit. We're reminding ourselves that even the angels uh, appreciate that God is so much beyond their realm, all the more so for us. So we skipped one phrase, Ukdoshim b'chol yom yahalal And holy ones will praise you every day. Who are these holy ones that we're referring to? So the Rebar Yakar brings down two possibilities. One possibility is us, the mankind, mankind, when we praise God. Jews, when we praise God, we are being people of sanctity. We might not be people like God's sanctity, but we're exhibiting our own sanctity in our own manner, which is a fascinating thing to think about, that even though you're so far beyond us, when we connect to you in our own way, we become kedoshim. In our own way, we become sacred in, in some way. He brings out another shot, which is very interesting, <coughs> which is that this refers to the souls of righteous people after they've left this world. It, it's, if, if I may say so, it's a very powerful thing. So many of us, um, particularly people during their year of mourning, find a special connection in prayer when thinking about loved ones who have passed. It's a fascinating shot to reflect on when saying this Brachan Shmon Esrei. That the souls of, of, of very special people after they've left this world praise you and Shemayim every day. It's an interesting chat to think about. The Rebbe Yarker poses a question, which maybe is occurring to some of you, which is it's a famous Pasuk in Halil, in Halil, Lo yahaluka, that those who have passed can't praise God. <coughs> so, right, it seems to be a contradiction. Yeah. So uh, he actually suggests that the wording here is very precise. Um, people who are uniquely, who, whose conduct in this world was of a unique piety, and again, none of us can judge that, that's only for God to judge, 
they're their souls even after they leave this world, praise God. In other words, the, 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 the quote unquote average people, people who maybe aren't so, he actually says it the other way, he says people who are wicked, <coughs> once they leave this world, they lost their chance to praise God. The people who conduct themselves in this world with, with, with piety, they can praise God even after they leave this world. Just an interesting shot to think about. Okay, so that's, that's the Brach of Atav Kadosh. We're about to pass our, our clip from last week. Uh, any, any comments, questions before we go on? Yeah, does anybody say it's the angels? You know, it's very interesting. I'm not sure that I would see all the... I, I honestly don't really assume it's the angels. Um, I, there must be a shot that says the angels, but these were the main things that I saw. It's a very, it's a very interesting thing. Yeah, thank you. In fact, there is, according to Haskell, such an interpretation. That, that it refers to angels. It says, the term may refer to the angels, even to Fila, or as most commentators agree, to Israel, Abu Abraham. Right. But he does bring down the angels. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's go on to the next bracha. Now, this is not only the next bracha, this is the beginning of the middle section of Shemona Esrei. So the, this is the section of requests. It is a fascinating study, not only to look at what requests we make in Shemona Esrei, but the sequence of those requests. We could probably fill a class or two just to talk about the order of Shemona Esrei. Not the general order, but why this bracha and then that bracha. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. I, I, I kind of, maybe we'll, we'll make a comment here and there. Um, but this is the first bracha of the bakasha section, of the request. And it's all about God giving us wisdom, God giving us understanding. Just to share a few comments, because I think it's, it's, it's very meaningful. Uh, the commentary in Migdal David says that the greatest thing God can give us in this world, if the pursuit in our, in our world is about becoming complete people. The greatest gift God can give us is understanding. Greater than parnasa, greater than health, but, but, but wisdom and understanding is the greatest gift he can give us. That's the first request we make. Very interesting thing. Um, the tour says, the idea is, what's the difference in the end of the day between man and other creations? Our, our wisdom, our unique wisdom. So that, that's what we focus on. This is all about if, if prayer is about our connection with God, and the request section of Shemona Esrei is about what we ask of God to help make our existence in this world more meaningful. This is what we are as people. It's an interesting thing. Uh, there's a quote from Yerushalmi, if we don't have understanding, how can we have real prayer? Another, you know, when we relate to God, it has to be with, with, with a sense of an understanding of who we are, what God's world is, etc. We have to have understanding in order to pray in an effective manner. Okay, so we say, das. You, chonein is such an interesting word. Chonein is like a language of a gift, like a, a, a compassionate gift. You, you gracefully give knowledge, wisdom to man. Um lameid lenosh bina, and you teach man understanding. Chonein meitcha. Again, you have this word of chonein. You know, graciously give us from yours, Dea Bina Vahaskel. These three words, which we'll get into a little bit, different types of understanding. Uh, the Rebar Yaakov explains that the basic thing which we're asking of God in this bracha is that he should give us the wisdom and understanding to have reverence for him and to make the right decisions, the right, make the right decisions in life. That's the main thing we're asking for in this bracha. And he suggests that in this bracha we have reference to Das, we have reference to Bina, and in general we, we relate to Chachma as being something you know related to these terms, and he says there are psukim for all these words that connect with our relationship with God. Haskel v'yadoa osi, have wisdom and know me. Hein yiras Hashem hi Chachma, appropriate reverence for God is wisdom. Vesur meira Bina, that a person should understand to turn away from evil. So he says, that's really what we're asking for. We could be asking for so many other things. This is a very important thing to think about, that in any bracha in Shemona particularly the requests, there can be the literal meaning, and there can be things that hit us in a different way. Right? You know, I guess it's the, uh, it's the retired high school teacher in me, but yes, you could have kavanah if you have a test that day, that God should help you, uh, that God should help you know what to write. That also fits into Atal uh, Um More if you're giving a class. Okay. Um, <laughs> Now, Rav Shimon Schwab says a very interesting thing about the difference between Das and Bina. 
So das is normally understood as basic knowledge. You give man wisdom, knowledge. Bina is a language of lehavin, to understand. It's normally associated with extracting one thing from another thing. So he says, you know what Bina really is? Bina is really the capacity to add to our knowledge and understanding. And he says that happens in this world generation to generation. It's a fascinating thing to think about. It's always nice when we have modern things like technology that we can fit into such a traditional thing like the Shemona Esra. So what he essentially says is, that a person could stop and think for a moment, think of what we're able to do with science today that we weren't able to do 20 years ago, 30 years ago, etc. That's just another example of the Bina which God brings to our world. Basic understanding is Das, basic knowledge is Das. Bina is the constant ability to keep on furthering that. By the way, if I may just say as an aside, um, something to think about every, every Saturday night, we, 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 when we make Havdalah, we light a fire. Why do we light a fire? So the reason we light a fire is because Adam and Chava lit the first fire Saturday night after Shabbos. So we, in recognition of that, light a fire Saturday night. That's the basic reason for Adan Allah. I always like to think about it. I think it's a very interesting thing. So that's great. Why don't, why, let's figure out the first time they had uh, you know, pasta for supper and let's, let's have pasta. I mean, like, very nice. They lit a fire. Wonderful. Um, fire is really a tremendous thing because it, it, it doesn't... It, God didn't create fire. God created items in this world with which we can make fire. And so if we mark, if we mark the creation of fire, what we're really marking is God giving us the capacity to continuously create and invent and develop this beautiful world that he gave us. It's a fascinating thing to think about any Saturday night at Avdala. Um, especially if you need something to think about while you're trying to find the matches. It's a good... Um, but, but, but truth be told, Umla made the Oshbina, that this, this is the point that Rav Schwab makes, that he, God teaches man this, this greater level of understanding. You should give us wisdom from Deya, we've explained already, Deya's basic wisdom. Bina is the ability to take that wisdom further and whether we understand it or, or further it. Haskel, we of course know the word Haskel. Haskel is associated with Seichel. Right, like sense. Rav Schwab suggests that what we mean when we talk about Haskell is the ability to bring ideas into the practical world. Right, so many times people might have brilliant ideas but not have the capacity, ability, whatever it is to bring it into the actual, you know, from the potential to the actual, and that's referred to by Haskell. So these are all things we can relate to them when we look around the world, but we can also relate to them in our own personal lives, that God is giving us this wisdom in so many different ways, but in the end of the day, as the Rebbe Yaakar, as we began with the Rebbe Yaakar, what we're really asking is God should give us the wisdom to see him in this world and to help us make the right decisions based on that wisdom. Baruch HaTo Hashem, Chonein HaDoas, that you are the one who graciously grants us with wisdom. Any comments, questions before we come on? Does Bina have any, um, and, and maybe that it's desirable to explain this to me, and I forgot it, because um, <laughs> I am a class um, does being have anything to do with vain, like between, like between that you that part of our understanding is when we can make distinctions. Sometimes we we cut we put things together, but sometimes we make distinctions, and maybe that's. I think that makes a lot of sense. Huh. Whether or not Mrs. Nice Arslan told it to you, I think it makes a lot of sense. I, I think it, thank you for sharing. Thank you. For, I wasn't. I had never thought about that, but thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Yes. Uh, why in the Bracha does it specify dots? Well, it, it does, and it talks about Das, and then it talks about Bina. No, oh, great, great question. Yeah, let me repeat that. The question is, Baruch HaTo Hashem, Chonein HaDoas, he gives Das, why does it say Chonein Bina? Why does it say Chonein Das Bina Haskel? Why does it just say Das? It's a great question. Um, I'm not sure. I assume the answer to your question is that everything else is building upon knowledge. In other words, you... If you only have understanding, but you don't have any knowledge, you're not going to be able to do much with that. Understanding is taking a fact and doing something with it. But das is the basic uh, knowledge at the beginning. I, I assume that's the I assume that's the point. It kind of all starts with das. The other languages of Bina and Haskell are building on that das. Thank you. That's an interesting point. 
I, I, I wonder about that. And I'll tell you, the normal order when you have Chachma, the normal order is Chachma Bina Das Chabad, right? That's, the, that's what Chabad spells out, it's the acronym, right? Um, Chachma Bina Das. Um, it seems like we're using the terms in different ways here, and as you point out, we're not even talking about Chachma here. It's, yeah. Sorry. Is there a reason we're not talking about Chachma? I don't know. That's a very fair, I'm sorry, I don't know. Chachma, isn't Chachma usually um, spoken out, or am I? So the only thing is, you would, you would, you would, you would assume, <laughs> normally the sequence is Chachma Bina Das. Chachma is basic knowledge. Bina is kind of extrapolating one thing from another, and, and Das is kind of transferring that knowledge to other contexts. That's normally the way it's understood. Why we're not working with Chachma here, I don't know. Unless, unless you say, it's interesting, um, Chachma is the basic knowledge. Bina is kind of understanding something from that knowledge, and Das is kind of like extrapolating that to something else. Uh, unless the point here is something a little bit different. Unless the point here, as the Rebbe Yaakov says, maybe it has more to do with sort of seeing God in this world, and then maybe th these three fit better with that. I don't know. But he did bring that up also. He talks about Chachma and God. I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not getting <laughs> um, okay, next bracha, next bracha, hashivenu. So, so this is, 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 a very, is a very powerful bracha, and I just want to reflect on something for a moment. Maybe you all think about it all the time. I don't, I don't think about it much, to be honest with you. So what's this bracha about? This bracha is about God bringing us back, right? Shuba, shuba, harut sebes shuba. Uh, that he, he, you know, uh, welcomes our, our returning to him. I think many of us associate tshuva with asking for forgiveness. And that's a separate bracha. That's the next bracha. So what we have to do a little bit is, as we're looking at these two brachas, we have to understand what, and clearly there is a difference, but what is the difference between hashivenu, which is about our returning to God, and slach lanu, God forgiving us for our sins. So let's just... Think about that a little bit as we get into this. Um, why is this bracha here? So we gave, gave a whole thing about why the first bracha of the request section is asking God for wisdom and, and knowledge. Now we talk about God bringing us on the path. So a number of the commentators cite a pasuk in Yeshaya, which is ulvavo yavin, that the person's heart will understand, v'shav rafalo, and he'll return to God and God will heal him. So, but the key is once we have understanding, then we can return to God. In the end of the day, we have a very hard time getting on the right path if we don't have an appreciation for where, where that path is supposed to lead, or, or which path we're supposed to be looking for. So the first step is really wisdom. Again, wisdom, not necessarily book knowledge, but wisdom in terms of an understanding of where we are in this world. Once we have that, we can talk about Hashivayim. We could talk about God bringing us back. So the basic request here is God should bring us to his Torah, he should bring us close to his service. The Migdal David poses a basic question. Whose job is that? To get us to, to serve God appropriately and to connect to his Torah. That's our job. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining... I'm imagining going home and seeing my children asleep, but I'm, I'm also imagining coming home and not seeing them asleep <laughs> and, 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 and having one of my sons turn to me and say, please make it that I can go to sleep, you know, that I can lie down in my bed. And I would be very quick to say to him, well, you can make yourself lie down in your bed, you know. So we ask God, help us come, you know, bring us close to you. The famous quote from the Gemara, Kol B'day Shemayim, Chutz Meir Shemayim. Everything is in the hands of heaven except for, for fear of heaven, except for reverence of heaven. So what are you asking God for? This is such a powerful thing to think about. The Migdal David <coughs> suggests that what we're asking God to do is to help us by removing those things which are obstacles to our coming closer to Him. In the end of the day, it's for us to do. We have to get it together. It's our job. It's absolutely our job. But what we can ask Him is we can ask Him to make the job a little bit easier by removing some of the obstacles. That's what we're asking for in this bracha. It's an interesting thing to think about. You know what, if you don't mind, let me just, maybe after each breath, we'll pause for a if you don't mind. Thank you. 
Um, the goal is the cover board rather than the Wednesday night class. <laughs> so, so, okay. Um, now, there's, there's a very interesting <coughs> Sifri. Uh, the Rebbe Yoker cites the Sifri. It's, it's in Sefer Tvar and Perak Lamed Gimel, uh, number Yudal. We say, Torah Tzivalon Moshe, God commanded us, with, uh, Moshe conveyed the Torah to us, Mora Shaki Las Yaakov. It's an inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. What's the significance of calling it an inheritance? What's that all about? So the Zifri says as follows. Imagine a young prince who, for whatever reason it was, left the palace at a very young age, left the royal residence, and then, later in life, wants to come back. Wants to come back, to live in the king's palace, to enjoy the trappings of royalty. So compare that individual to someone who never lived in the palace. So the person who never lived in the palace, it's a ridiculous dream. Who are you? What makes you think you'll belong in the palace? The person who once lived in the palace, even if it was years ago, even if it was for a short time, even if it's their own fault for having left the palace, it's part of their Yerusha. It's part of their inheritance. It's part of what's coming to them. I was born a son of the king. So yes, on some level I believe I can come back whenever I want. And that, says the Medrash, is what's meant to Morasha Kilas Yaakov. That Torah is an inheritance to the Jewish people. Some of us are constantly involved with Torah. Some of us have not been involved with Torah for a very long time. But the point is, anyone among the Jewish people can always treat the Torah as their inheritance. And the Rebbe Yucker suggests a similar concept in this bracha. Hashivenu avinu secha. We say, God, please bring us back to your Torah that we really believe that this is something naturally connected, that with, to which we're naturally connected. And it, we're not starting from square one. We have an, an inherent connection to God's Torah through being part of the Jewish people. And he says, perhaps, that's part of the significance in the choice of words, our Father, please bring us back to our Torah. Why didn't it say our King? Why didn't it say our Master? So he says the Peshat is our father because our connection to him and his Torah is something that comes naturally to us. Just as a child has a natural connection with a parent. An interesting thing to think about. Um, the tour mentions a very interesting thing, which again, there are many thoughtful people here, far more thoughtful than I. Maybe you thought about this, never even hit me before. The, the, evidently, there's only two brothers in Shon Esri that refer to God as our father. Hashivenu avinu l'sarasecha, what we just read, and the next bracha. Slach lanu avinu I mean, why don't we say, our Father, please heal us? We don't say, our Father, please heal us. We say, Hashem, please heal us. Uh, much of it is Hashem, or Hashem elokeinu, elokeinu 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 Very rarely do we talk about God being our Father. Let me just, let me just. So, um, so the tour suggests that each of these two brachos, there's a unique connection to the parent-child relationship. A parent has an obligation to teach their child Torah. That's what we have. So come in Shema, Shinam Tom Levon Echel, you teach it to your sons, teach it to your children. So Ashibenu Avinu L'Sora Secha. We ask you to bring us close to the Torah, and just like any parent is obligated to bring their child to the Torah, so too we try to relate to you in that manner. The next one I think we can understand a little bit intuitively. When we're asking for forgiveness for our sins. We try to pull out whatever stops we can. So the whole emotional connection we hope will help us. So a slachlan or avinu ki You know, maybe, maybe as a king you don't want to forgive us, but forgive us as a father. But, but that's the pshat the Torah says in this bracha that we're touching on the whole parent-child connection in terms of the study of Torah. Okay, so let, let's get back to the actual words. Hashivenu avinu l'soro secha. Bring us, return us, our Father, to your Torah. Rav Schwab has a beautiful thought here. He says, not just return us to the Torah, but return us to your Torah. Which that could be understood in light of what we were discussing earlier, that this is something that we've always connected to through God. But it could mean something else. Rav Schwab suggests that maybe it means... Give us an appreciation for your Torah. Let it be that when we study your Torah, when we open a Chumash, when we hear them leaning in Shoal, that we see this as God's holy Torah. So many times we spend so much time studying Torah, we don't necessarily have a real appreciation for it. 
mean, it's, it's, a, it's a remarkable thing to think about that this is the closest thing we have today to prophecy. This is the word of God to the Jewish people. This is, do, we, do we think of it that way? So not only bring us close to the Torah, but bring us close to <coughs> your Torah. Give us appreciation for that. Hashivenu avinu secha, vikarvenu malkenu secha. And our king, bring us close to your service. Now, if we're interested in playing the father card, why in the world did we jump into the king? Let's stay on the father. You know, we right. We'll, we'll say in a few months uh, on Rosh Hashanah Kippur, in kivanim, in kavodim. Maybe you look at us as sons, as children. Maybe you look at us as servants. But we're really hoping you look at us as children. So why are we talking here about God, our King? So the Rebbe Yaakov says that the fact that we refer to him as our King is actually an implicit recognition that maybe we don't deserve to refer to you as our Father. In other words, maybe we'll say to you, God. Return us, return us, O oh Father, and maybe your response will be, you haven't been acting like much of a child. So if that's your response, we'll come to you on another front. Understanding that we're not so, we're not so I, 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 as they say, uh, even as, as a melech, we're ready to, even as a king, we're ready to come close to you. Sort of like how we do say in the, in the davening of the Yom Noraim, im kibani, im, im, im kabade, whether it be like children, or be like servants. Okay, um, what do we mean when we talk about serving you? So, the Abu Draham suggests that it could very well mean referring to doing God's mitzvot, serving God by doing his mitzvot, keeping his commandments. But the other possibility is that his avoda, his serving him, refers to prayer. What an interesting thing to think about in Shemona Esrei, that we ask him, that bring us close to praying to you in a meaningful way. It's sort of ironic that as we pray, we ask for help in prayer, but if we think about it, the vast majority of us could use all the help we can get. Um, okay, so that's an interesting thing to think about. And return us with a complete return before you. What does that mean, a complete return? What's the emphasis of a shlema, of a complete return? So the Rebbe Yaakar says, we know that it's not so easy as it sounds in this bracha. At least it sounds at the beginning of this bracha. Where would you like to go? I'd like to return to God. Okay, great. Get on the next ride. You know, take the next train. It's going to God. It's not that easy. We know that. We know that a person who comes to purify himself gets great assistance from above. But the first step is not asking God to purify us, but doing it. So the recognition, says the Rebbe Yaakar, is that we understand we can't ask God really to bring us back. Who needs to bring us back? We need to start it. What we can ask God is once we start on that path to help us and make the, the steps completely successful. As we quoted before, if a person comes to purify themselves, they get divine assistance. So make our help us make the return complete. We can't ask you to make the return for us, but we can ask you that once we're doing it to complete the mission for us. That's uh, that's what the Rebbe Yaakar says. Um, another point that he makes, an interesting thing to think about, he brings, I believe he brings a pasuk. I forgive me, I didn't write the pasuk. But there's only one time that we can have a complete return to God. And that is when the ultimate redemption comes. So it's interesting. So there, there's a whole additional meaning if you look at the, the, the line this way. That's not only help me become a better person, but within the mode of all of us becoming better people, you should bring us all to our ultimate redemption. I just want to share a, a muscle that Ruf Schwab says, it's a very strong mashal, it's a very strong uh, parable to think about. Imagine a child had some type of terrible dispute with a parent and left the home and hasn't been home for years and finally decides that they want to come home. But it's not so easy to just come and knock on the door. You have to call to see, will they accept you home? Will they not accept you home? 
So the child calls and he has a very uh, difficult, awkward conversation. And of course, the parent is very accepting of the child. It's this tearful conversation over the phone. Then, you know, this is great. And when you're coming, great. Then before the child hangs up the phone, the child says, one more thing. Could you send me money to buy a ticket home? <laughs> so that's essentially what we're asking for in this bracha. In other words, God, not only accept us, but help us get there. Help us get there. But we do recognize that we have to take the first steps. But we, we implore you, we beg you, to help us get there, whether it be through a connection to your Torah, whether it be through a connection to davening, whether it be through a connection to doing mitzvos. We ask for your assistance to help us. Baruch HaTo Hashem, Harot Seb is Shuvah. Harot Seb is Shuvah that he desires, that he, that he I, I think you could say, he gains great nachas from our interest in coming back to him. Mm-hmm. Numerous people wanted to make comments uh, during the... Harley, did you want Yeah, um, I wanted to just say that I like your use of the word return rather than repentance. And um, the reason for that is I think this bracha is really about relationship. Um, and what we're asking God to do is to help us renew our relationship with God. And I think the proof is from the order because if it was really about the word teshuva that we think of, you know, repentance, then you'd have slachlana uh, first, because that would be God, you know, forgive us for our sins and then let us uh, do tshuva. Right. But since I don't think this is really about tshuva as we use the word, it's really about a relationship. I think that's a wonderful point. Thank you very much. And, uh, and I think it's, it's, it's not too early. Uh, to extrapolate from your point that I think in general we use, we use the word a little bit incorrectly. I think you're right. Uh, and I think the order here in the brachos is very meaningful. By the way, your comment speaks so powerfully to why we specifically refer to God as Avinu, as our Father, because this is a very much a relationship bracham. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Stuart. Two quick observations. I would also point out that both this bracham and the next one have Avinu Malkainu. Thank you. So it also reminds us of the whole teshuva thing. Thank you. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out was, to me, when I was thinking about why does this teshuva bracha come so early in the, I mean, right after Bina, and maybe I'm projecting here, uh, but um, sometimes our knowledge, the world's knowledge and the, and the wisdom that we acquired has actually taken us away from God, and that we ask him to, despite that knowledge that he's given us, to help us come back to him. It's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Uh, I have a little quibble <clears throat> with your idea that first we start and then Hashem brings us along. I think the idea of grace is that we get what we don't even deserve. And, and if we take that, the, the principle that we, and that many points in here influence us to return, we're, we're asking him to, to, to come to us and push us and pull us, give us opportunities to see the light, so to speak. Then we go and take our, our walk and we have to even further. But I think it's the idea of grace, which is pervasive, is it starts with Hashem. He gives the opportunities, but you may not see them, but won't have to keep us keep giving us more breaks, more opportunities. Yeah, thank you. I mean, I I'll, I'll guess I'll just say that the general, the general concept that we, we need to take that first step it, it is not local to this bracha. I mean, it, it's, it's pervasive throughout the Talmud, uh, you know, numerous sorts of that. Having said that, I, I totally agree that many, many times God sends us signs uh, that if we take it the right way, it can help us, uh, it can help us tremendously. Um, I still think we have to grab that sign, but I still think it's tremendous grace that he gave us that sign. Why some people, um, it's, it's, by the way, it's a fascinating thing to think about. Is everybody getting those signs and only some people recognize them? Is, is, are only some people getting them? Who knows? Who knows? But, um, I mean, on, on a basic level, uh, the concept that we have to take steps and then God helps us, there are numerous mamar uh, chazal to that effect. I, I don't think that precludes your, your specific point here. Uh, is, uh, okay. Well, I mean, the very fact that in tefillah we're, we're reaching out and we're putting something of ourselves into it, and, you know, it's not saying that there's only one shot for everything. Right. So, you know, I mean, obviously, there's you know more there are a number of proper ways that one could perceive this, but there's 
room for variation within that. And if it has meaning for us, then that's part of Tefillah, is to take, take it and, yeah. and bring us yeah. up. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much. If I could just say along the lines of what Max said, I, I might have mentioned this in Shul, I don't remember. I, I've had the, uh, the very, very good fortune and honor over the past number of months uh, to be involved with with some people and some individuals in the conversion process and um, hearing what moved an individual to get involved with Judaism it's it's extremely inspiring so there was a person I'm sure I'm not going to get this exactly right but very very moving so there was a certain individual who came to meet with us and you know like the, the rabbis on the base then, and um, he asked you know what what made you interested in Judaism and, and long story short, the, the person was having somewhat of a, of a dilemma of how to move forward in life. And they were doing a lot of searching in terms of theological meaning. They'd always thought a little bit about Judaism. And, but they didn't know, yes, no. And they said, you know, God, I'm, I'm, putting, I'm leaving this up to you. You know, if, if I'm supposed to take this route, you, you set me aside. And, uh, and they said, over the next week, they kept on bumping, bumping into all these observant Jews. And it was, it was the strangest thing, you know, they go to the dentist and he's an observant Jew. And, and they, they had never met this person before at the dentist's office, and this observant Jew, and this one's an observant Jew, and that was an observant Jew, and those people were saying these wise things to the person. And um, I was shocked. I was hoping it would be five rabbis showed up, but that wasn't part of the story. But, um, but I'm saying just a beautiful example that I heard saying, you know, and I think there's a lot of truth to it. Yeah, thank you. On the Kavana level, I mean, it, it seems to be very plural rather than singular. So, what is our intention? Are we saying that ourselves should, you know, be turned, or are we saying for the community? I mean, what at the, at the private Amida? What is Thank you. our thought? Thank you very much, and I'm I'm remiss for not <coughs> saying it right at the beginning. It's a very important point. If you look at the grammar of Shmona Esrei, it's all in the plural, not just in this part. But you see, it's it's left and right throughout Shmona Esrei. And it's fascinating because here's it's a private prayer, and we're saying it in the plural. The idea is supposed to be that if it's something that I need, there must be other people who need it too. So I relate to it in my private manner, but as I'm davening for myself, I daven for everyone. It's, it's such a powerful thing. When we, when we make a Mishabera for someone, <coughs> whether we make a Mishabera for a list of people, whether we just for one, we always end off the Sok Shar for Israel, among the other sick of Israel. That's always how we relate to things. Thank you for making that point. I'm sorry for mentioning it myself. Thank you. Um, Nancy. Um, I have a slight difference, uh, well, I ha I've heard a different interpretation uh, in contradiction to Stuart, um, that, and um, again, I hope I remember it correctly, this I, I don't, I'm not trying to drop names, this is, I learned this through David Drogan, if anybody knows the mm -hmm. Price family um, in Los Angeles. Uh, so he said that when you ask for wisdom and understanding and all these things, and Hashem, God willing, gives it to you, then it's a natural, then you realize that, oh, I have to do tshuva. It's not that the knowledge and the wisdom has taken you away from Hashem, but rather it has made you, given you better understanding of what you need to get closer to Hashem yeah. and, and understanding of Torah and things like that. So it's a, a slightly different version of what you're saying, um, a much more hopeful one in some ways. Uh, I, I, there's many spaces to the Torah. So. Absolutely. Thank you very <laughs> they much. they both work in some ways. Thank you very much. Aaron, did you want to say something before? Oh, yeah. I was just going to follow up on what was said earlier in terms of signs and Hashem influencing us to go to Shiva. Sometimes it's not just the signs. Sometimes it's just the basic motivation. And I think the term in the Torah is the koach class is high. That it's not even the sign. It's just the strength to even use our own sitta, which also doesn't necessarily come from us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, maybe last comment and then we'll yeah, continue. Yeah, last comment only because there was some a young woman in the back who wanted to say something and we asked oh. anyway. Linda. Linda, I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. Thank, Thank, you. Okay. Thank you for young. I love Thank you. Thank you. You're my, I'm, I'm your Thank best friend tonight. Okay. <laughs> no, it was said on many different levels. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm Thank okay, you. But I was already said on many different levels. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Yes. Okay, about the Bracha Tachonema Vadanban. Okay, uh, just very briefly, it, you know, there are many different types of knowledge that man can have. 
Um, sometimes it's not about knowledge of God, sometimes knowledge of the stock market. Sure. No. Um, so what is the knowledge that, I, that we're asking? I think, I think it's all included. These are all different types of gods. I mean, obviously, it should be knowledge that we should use appropriately, you know, knowledge to help destroy the world, heaven forbid, we're probably not asking for that, but, but all, all, all types of knowledge, but knowledge to protect people, you know, is wonderful. All, all types of knowledge, stock market, medicine, everything under the sun. I, I, what I meant before by the comment was the greatest thing we could ask for, but I think we're asking for all types of wisdom. I think that's absolutely true. I think you're correct about that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Slach um, the, the the last bracha for tonight. I, 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 there's a number of comments like the one I'm about to say, and I, not my speed, I normally don't share it, but this is what I was so struck by. The Kolbo says as follows, there are 20 words in this bracha, and if you count, I did not test this one, but if you count the number of times it says either v'neslach or v'salachta, languages of forgiveness in the Torah, it's 20 times. So I thought that was just interesting. Okay. Um, and if you go home and count, and it's either 19 or 21, don't tell me about it. Um, there are three couplings in these two phrases. These are both languages of forgiveness. Our father, our king. These are both languages of sin. So we're... we're, we're Varying on all three of those fronts. There must be something going on here. Um, the Rebbe Yucker explains that, excuse me, there are, there are different types of sins. Chait has a connotation of an unintentional sin. Pesha has a connotation of an intentional sin. A great sin, actually. Pesha really connotes a great sin great rebellion. So he says, imagine, imagine a person who comes and does a, a terribly disrespectful act to another individual. So to go to them and ask them, could we just pretend this never happened? It's not going to work well. Mm -hmm. To ask for forgiveness for the sin, I know it happened, I know we can't pretend it never happened, but I'm just asking that it be somehow uh, recognized that I felt bad about it. That one can do. Um, many, many of our sins are, are quite grave. Uh, to have the audacity to come to God three times a day and say, by the way, you know, whatever, whatever we did wrong, we hope to just, you know, move on, you know, let's, let's restart, uh, you know, let's reboot, you know, Doesn't, might not work so well. Unless we relate to God as a father. Uh, it's a very interesting thing. Chait, as we mentioned, is a language of an unintentional sin. <coughs> I believe I only know one person in this world who I could do or say the most terrible, disrespectful thing to her, and I'll call her and, and I'll apologize, and she'll say, nah, you didn't mean it, it came out the wrong way, and that's my mother. <laughs> so, so, slach lanu avinu ki chatanu, just tell you, all, all, all my past high school students all know whenever I would pause about my mother, I would pause for her and say, nicest lady in the world. Uh, and I'm getting a few nods here. Slach lanu avinu, slach lanu avinu ki chatanu. So we turn to our father only as a parent. If I would ask my father for this, he'd tell me to talk to my mother. But only, I'm just, only as, only as a parent can he see our sins as being mistakes? So we turn to you as a parent and we say, you know, we've, we've sinned unintentionally. Now on the level that similar, as Stuart correctly pointed out before, in the previous bracha also we coupled our father with our king. On some level we realize that we can't just explain it all away. On some level we have to come for reckoning to our king. So mechal on king, it's another type of forgiveness because when we're dealing with God as a king, we realize that we've, we've uh, sinned terribly. So we have both levels. We kind of relate to God in an emotional, hoping to draw his compassion. And in that mode, he probably, hopefully, will look at our sins as less severe. But we also come before our king, and we ask for forgiveness. So let me just pose a question. 
key normally is translated as because. Forgive us because we have sinned. I, I maybe when, maybe. So two two pshatim. So the Avudraham says that, that, that it could be the pshat is despite the fact. You know, forgive us despite the fact that we've sinned. The, the Reba Yarkar says a powerful thing. The Reba Yarkar says, it's not forgive us because we've sinned. It's forgive us because we admit that we've sinned. And, and the fact that we see our own shortcomings and we recognize that we're far from perfect, particularly, by the way, if we have specific things in mind, that's even, even more meaningful. So the, the, missing, the missing thing between the lines here is because we recognize that we've sinned. It's a very interesting shot. Okay. You are a forgiving, you do both. You're both mochel and soleach. Baruch atu Hashem, chanun hamar belisloach. The compassionate one who is abundant in his forgiveness. Rav Shrab makes an interesting point. Um, chonein is to do an act of compassion. We had that in, 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 in two brachos ago. You, you give knowledge, you give wisdom to people. So it should have said, Baruch to Hashem, Chonein, B'slicha, you know, you, 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 you give us forgiveness. Chanun is, is a reflexive. It's that he becomes compassionate. And he suggests that the pshat and the wording is, that when asked to be forgiving, <coughs> he forgives. So Chonein is proactive, similar to the comment made before about God gives us abilities. Chonein is proactive. Chanun is as a response. That when we turn to him asking for forgiveness, he's inclined to forgive us. Is that interesting? Any comments, God, questions? Chanun is the term that God uses for himself. Yes, we're saying this about God. Uh, it's the term he, he chose. Right, but, but again, this doesn't have to be the only the only approach, but I, I think what he's responding to to a certain extent is why two brachos ago is there a different form of the word? I, I think that's where he's coming from to a certain extent. Rafe. I know there's certain parts of Shemesh you're allowed to add in, you know, your own things, right? When you do this bracha, you're not supposed to say, you're supposed to like have in mind what the sins are, right? Or are you supposed to like express them? Okay, so so thank you. That's that's a great question. Um also probably something I should have begun this section with, I apologize. As a general rule, the, the brachos in the middle of Shemona Esrei were actually not supposed to insert things into this request section in most of these brachos. We can always think about specific things. It, it, it generally makes it more meaningful for us if we think about specific things. There are two or three spots in davening that are traditional to include things. Um, one is in Shema Kolenu. One is in Shema Kolenu. If you see, you know it must be real if there's a gray box in the art school center. Right. And that's on, on, page, on page 108. Um, 108, there are, there are things that a person... So, for example, there's a request for forgiveness in there, if you see on page 108. Um, rumor has it that there are spouses that give their partners... Siturim as gifts with this section underlined, um, but, but um, the um, so traditionally the brach of Shema Koleinu is kind of like a catch-all for prayer. Um, we traditionally do not insert specific requests in in the other brachos in the middle. There also is a time to ask for things before we take three steps back. We will talk about that near the end. Um, so if someone has a specific sin in mind, it would make sense to include it in Shema Koleinu. But it could be sometimes, if, if it makes the words more come to life for a person, it makes sense to be thinking about it during this bracha. Did I answer your answer? Yeah, thank you, thank you for listening. Right, before you know, we'll get to God willing. But I was just saying that our Shema Koleinu is unique in this, that it's, it's a broad, we certainly insert things in Rafael. Yeah, thank you. And there also is an art scroll box there. Yes, sir. Yeah. Just again on the same thing that I mentioned earlier. On the Kavana, it says, 
do we have in mind, let's say, other family members that we want to have, have forgiven, or just us, because it's, or the community? I think, I, think, I think the recognition that we're all flawed, surely we all sin, and if I ask God to forgive me, I ask God to forgive all those also. So we probably shouldn't be having the specific sins of specific individuals in mind, because it's, it's a little bit like you're bringing them under the... Uh, uh, but I think it makes sense if, if I need forgiveness, I'm sure there are others in the who need forgiveness. Okay. So yeah. That way you just have to think about all these I think so. If not, if, we, if, if it was like what you're wondering about, it would be much easier to have come on during that one. We can think about all the... <laughs> 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 I was you know, thinking, you know, I don't mean... For children, I don't necessarily mean it facetiously, but, but thinking, you know, you said, you know, if you said this to your mother, she was... You know, a mother would say, I, what do you have to ask me for? It's, it's there. Whereas a, a father says, if you go out there and you say something, he'll meet you. But, Interesting. You know, there's a, a different... You know. Interesting. Even though, I think even, even, a, even a mother, if, if, if she felt it was an important educational... Uh, Not your, your mother would just... No, you. my mother would just... <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. Unconditional. <laughs> Unconditional. I was just going to say, I'd like what Bernie asked, um, because if, if, let's say, a child sins against a parent, in order to be forgiven, they have to get mechila from the parent and also from God. And so it might be a perfect thing here for the parent to say, not only am I forgiving my child, but God, please forgive me. That's very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. And, the, and the fact is, it's like one of the plural. Right. So right. there is some logic to having a group thought process. Like that. Right. Though again, it, I mean, it's interesting because it's at the private one asked, right? I, I, I think, I think it's much easier to talk about having others in mind. Listen, a lot of these. Uh, you were, you were. Beryl was giving the example before about you could have all types of das, right? So let's say a person all types of wisdom. So let's say a person. Uh, is in a field, and he has in mind that God should help me find the right solution, and God should only help me, God should help all my colleagues. God, you, know, you know, I mean, I, I think, uh, heaven forbid, a person's not well, we can, we can certainly think of others, certainly think of others in the Parnassah, and I think in those settings, it makes sense to think about other people. It's, it's a little bit harder, it's, you know, to think about other people's sins, it's probably putting us in a place during davening that we might not necessarily should be, but if it's that a person has expressed uh, remorse, I, I think that could I think that could fit. I think that could fit. It is fascinating that God will only forgive if people repent. I mean that we're taught very clearly. It's I, 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 I someone else can't ask for forgiveness for me. I have to ask for forgiveness. Now someone can daven that my forgiveness, my request for forgiveness should be accepted. If but, I'm asking only for myself, I mean this because I'm asking for everybody. Right. Join me. So you're already achieving a higher level. Right. I mean, and, that, and that's a core thing. There, there's, there's a famous quote from Chazal that if I daven for something for you, uh, I'm, I'm going to be answered quicker than if I'm davening for something for myself. It, chain, it elevates the whole mode. Maybe if I can just close on this thought, a whole different way of thinking about the requests for the group. If if I see, this is something we spoke about last week, if I see prayer as not just a wish list to God, but I want to serve God well, and I need, I need these things in order to serve God well. I need wisdom in order to serve God well. I need help getting back to God in order to serve God well. I need forgiveness for my sins in order to serve God well. If my goal is because I want to serve you appropriately and therefore I need these things, so again, this is a very lofty plane. I wish I was there, but conceptually, so actually, it shouldn't make a difference to me if it's for me or if it's for you. As long as we're all doing what we're supposed to do in our service of God, that's all I really want anyway. You know, it's like a whole, again, this is a very lofty thing to even think about. It's like a whole different mode of, of the request. It's not, it's, it's not me, and it's not only us, it's actually you. And help us serve you in all these different ways. I'm just something to think about. Maybe Leah, I just, is there someone who hasn't had a chance to, okay, last comment. I just want to ask the difference between Mechila and Switka. So the Rebar Yucker suggests that, he doesn't say it explicitly, but, it, but it, it's, 
maybe that's the answer. But it, 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 uh, it seems to be it seems to be that that uh, right. God on line one. That was done. It's, it's, it seems to be. Um, it, it seems it seems to be that slicha is more on erasure. And mechila, uh, he doesn't say that explicitly, but right. mechila is sort of a, a recognition that the person is remorseful, you know. Uh, so you can turn to God, and, and God can treat the terrible act as just, it was just a mistake. Yeah, just a mistake, forget about it. Mm -hmm. You know, when there's a pesha, when there's like a rebellious action, you can't just forget about it. You can, you can request forgiveness. It's, it's a different type of, slicha is like a complete, yeah. Clemency, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you all for coming. Thank you very much.